Welcome back to the Twin Spires Jury. I'm Ashley Anderson here with James Scully and Darren Zakali to talk our best bets and fades of the week at Turfway Park, Oaklawn, Gulfstream, and Fairgrounds. We don't have any Kentucky Derby or Oaks prep races, but we have some major stakes action at Oaklawn and some other interesting races. So James, kick us off. Tell us what your best bet of the week is and where you're going to play that. I'm going to take a shot in a maiden race at Turfway Park. Number four, Tap It's Tail in the fifth race at Turfway Park Saturday is my best bet. It took a while, but this four-year-old son of Tappet has finally made it to the races. He will make his career debut in this six-and-a-half furlong maiden. And one thing's for certain, none of his rivals with experience uh, look imposing. Uh, I, I, I think it's a race where he, he really was fortunate to uh, draw in a spot where I think he can run big at first asking. Now, he's the first full to race from grade three score, Verbs Tail who was a hard-hitting, grade three winning mayor that earned like nearly $650,000 winning just three of 23 starts. But uh, like I said, uh, got a lot of minor awards as well. And while Nacho Correa's Tappet's Tales trainer wins at a low rate first time out, Tappet's Tail isn't your typical first time starter. He's a four-year-old. He's been working for a long time. And I think he's going to run well at first asking on Saturday night. Darren, who's your best bet? Yeah, I actually have a fade in that race that I'll talk about later. Kind of goes into the the theme that you're talking about. Yeah, that, I think he drew in a good spot, though, James. That came up much lighter as a maiden special weight than some of the previous ones we've seen in the meet. I think pro possibly some of the better maiden horses are being uh, left on the sideline until Keenan starts up in maybe three weeks' time or so. So you got a good shot there. Uh, I don't know if you're going to get 10 to 1 on him. I like him quite a bit, too, in there. But I uh, definitely agree with that pick. Uh, mine, I'm going to switch over to uh, to Oaklawn. Um, they have uh, in race number nine at Oaklawn Park. Uh, it is the Whitmore Grade Three event, uh, going six furlongs in there. Uh, Tejano Twist is going to take all the money, I, I imagine, and justifiably so. Him and Rivet look to be the two that will control the paramutual uh, wagering. I like Surveillance though. Uh, Surveillance is a horse that at age seven seems to be getting back to some of his best form here. He had a really good, good winter going into last year. Uh, then things went a little bit sideways uh, where he ran fourth in the count fleet last year, did not have a good spring and summer, obviously needed some time to be freshened up. They gave the horse about five months off, came back and ran a really good set on Kavad, who's a nice horse at the fairgrounds and a good uh, third level allowance, then came back and beat Kavad next time out in that same level. And now Keith the Sormo ships the horse on over to Oaklawn and they put the horse back in the stake where he has had success before. He's a seven-time winner. He's got a lot of back class to him. I think he's going to sit a good trip, mid-pack stalking, and he could get first run on Tejano Twist here, who we know is one move dead run closer. He'll be coming late, but the price is going to be three, four times better on surveillance, Ashley. I'm going to take a flyer, value play with the best bet surveillance in the uh, Whitmore Race 9 at Oakland on Saturday. I don't blame you. I like Rivet, but, you know, getting two to one on the morning line there, and so I think you're making a wise choice here with that price. I'm going to take it over to Turfway again and talk about the Queen Stakes. And my best bet is number 11, current climate at five to one. This is a winter money back offer. You get up to $10 back on your win bet if your horse finishes second or third. And this is a six furlong sprint. It drew a field of 12 with one also eligible. The morning line favorite BG Warrior at two to one. She just fired the six and a half furlong wishing well stakes by five and three quarter lengths. And you know, the race rating came back lighter than the competition she faced in her three prior races. So looking at that, even though she had that big figure, the other interesting thing is at six furlongs, she's 0 for 10. And now I just said that she wired the field in a six and a half furlong sprint. So that does indicate that, you know, shorter distance shouldn't be a problem. But when you see an 0 for 10 stat line, that really stands out to me. So I'm looking elsewhere here with current climate who also beat BG Warrior 2 back at six furlongs and an allowance optional claimer at this track. And current climate also has two straight wins at Turfway, three for five at this track, and also has two third place finishes. So that's another good stat for that winter money back, has always finished in the money at Turfway. So I'm going to take a shot here at five to one, but I think this horse can win it. I think the race is going to set up well for for her, for your top pick. I was also a little intrigued by uh, Michael McCarthy's Philly uh, Victorious, but I agree. I think BG Warrior is uh, going to face a lot of pressure that she didn't face last time, a lot of pace in there, and it uh, should set up well for a stalking type like uh, your top pick. 
All right, let's talk about the horses. We're fading at a short price. Darren, who do you have? Yeah, so the same race that uh, James had his best bet that made him special weight in race five at Turfway is my fade. You have a three to one morning line favorite. This is not a typo. That is O for 25 lifetime. <laughs> um, I'll just say this. I don't care what the rest of the field looks like. If you give me a maiden that's 0 for 25, that is going to be the morning line favorite, I will bet against him every day of the week and twice on Sunday. Uh, I understand the field is not that strong. you got horses stepping up for maiden claiming competition. You have a group of first-time starters. I get it. It's not an overwhelming maiden special weight field. But this horse has had opportunity after opportunity. The lack of early speed that this horse has is a real problem for him. He often gets himself in a spot that he has to overcome trip. He has to overcome pace or lack thereof. I don't see any reason why this is going to be different. You're giving me an 0 for 25 horse for the trainer. That's 0 for 32 on the meet at 3 to 1. Complete fade, complete toss. Try to open things up in the pick four and pick five and find some value. So, uh, accident it's no accident is a fade for me at uh, race number five at turf i i think it'd be the worst case scenario almost for the connections for him to win i mean this horse has made 120 184 000 placing and you know not winning maiden special weight races so uh yeah i think it would be an accident if he did win and i'm 100 percent <laughs> with you fading uh the over 25 types if I, if I owned, nine. I was just going to say, if I, if, yeah, if I owned this horse, uh, if he won, I would be in a 15,000 now winners of two life next time out. <laughs> <laughs> James, who do you have? Uh, my fate is in the fifth race at Oakland Park. It's going to be number five taxed in the fifth race at Oakland. And listen, I, I was a fan of tax last summer off of her win in the grade two black eyed Susan. I thought that was a really nice performance and she was, you know, improving at the time. She only ran, she came back and ran a good second in Indiana Oaks. And then she, I think she started to tail off in her next two starts running fifth in Alabama and a well beaten third in the Seneca overnight at Churchill in late September. And she hasn't been seen since she's coming back from a lengthy layoff. I look at this six furlong sprint as just a tightener in a, in a sense. Uh, Randy Morris uh, is experimenting at shorter distances. But in her 11 starts, Tax has never run at shorter than a mile. She's not a six furlong sprinter by any means. She's a two-turn router through and through in her career. And, um, you know, there is some pace signed on. But I think best case scenario would probably be second or third. So it's short odds. And I think she could get bet down lower than five to two morning line. I'm going to fade Tax from all of my uh, multi-race bets and win bets uh, in race five at Oakland Ashley. Yeah, I'm just going to jump in and say this is this is a stone cold fade as well. Couldn't agree more. Uh, there's an article out where uh, trainer Randy Morris talked about her, said that he was trying to get her ready for the Azari. But uh, unfortunately, the weather and those ice storms and the issues with the track subsequently kind of set things back a little bit. And the exact quote from him was, uh, she's never run anything shorter than a mile. Uh, I just want her to gallop out strong and finish. That's what we're looking for. So read between the lines. That is a trainer. Uh, jargon for uh, we're looking to get a good tightener under her and stretch her out next time. <laughs> Speaking of ice storms, my fate is Hull and Ice at three to one in race eight. This is a six furlong allowance at Oaklawn, and this is a three year old filly coming off a six length win in her second career start at today's distance. But her trainer's just a nine percent winner with horses coming off maiden win. It's a small sample size, but one for 11. And Hull and Ice is moving up to face some tougher competition here. Two of her rivals caught my eye. One of them's no coincidence is at nine to two, almost picked this horse as my best bet. And I think she could get the early lead over Holland Ice here. Ran a, ran a faster six furlong time in a maiden special weight last out on a sloppy track at Oaklawn compared to what Holland Ice ran on a fast track at Oaklawn at the same distance. I also think number two, Tim Bavadi, it's a 15 to one long shot, has a chance here to drew inside of Holland Ice and will also vie for the early lead. So I think number one, Holland Ice is going to get pushed here, has tougher competition. So I'm fading this horse at three to one. All right. I don't know. <laughs> Not the <laughs> most exciting race to talk about. I understand. <laughs> well, let's move on to the promos. I've talked about the winter money back a little bit, but Darren, what else do we have going on at Twin Spires this weekend? Yeah, we have something exciting coming up this weekend. Uh, it's a brand new promotion that we are trying out. It is called the Power Hour Profit Boost, and it is going to take place on Friday between 2 and 3 p.m. 
all of the races that are run between two and three o'clock that have a post time, I should say, between two and three o'clock, uh, they're going to be eligible for a 15 percent profit boost on win exacta, trifecta and superfecta wagers. In addition to that, we're going to have a broadcast with the three faces you see here talking about those races, uh, kind of a casual conversation, three people hanging out the track, handicapping some races. And during that broadcast, we are going to give you another offer code that's going to give you a chance to get another 15% profit boost on top of the 15% that we're already giving you in the Power Hour offer. So be sure to go to the offers page, opt into that, join us on the broadcast tomorrow. Be careful to listen. And hear that other offer. You're going to enter that in the offer code uh, on the offers page, and you're going to double your potential profit boost as well. So we're really excited for Power Hour. And the other one I'll briefly mention, of course, this weekend, we have a Kentucky Derby future wager that brings back the Kentucky Derby bankroll builder back in play. We have those series of bet get offers. The more you bet, the more you're going to get back in your account, Kentucky Derby week. So if there is a horse uh, listed in the future wager PPs that you like this weekend, Dial it up, make a wager, and we're going to give you some cash back Derby Week as well. So there's a whole, that and a whole lot more, as always, Ashley, on the uh, promotional page with us at Twin Spires. I'm excited for that future wager. We've got the Oaks future wager this weekend as well, too, and I already have my eye on a filly that I'm going to try to get before the price potentially drops. Well, let's talk about what else we're going to be watching for this weekend. James, what are you going to be watching for? Well, I'm going to be watching uh, the Hutchinson Stakes at Gulfstream Park. It's a six furlong sprint for three-year-olds. You know, this race, you know, some some years it doesn't come up very strong, but I think a really uh, interesting field of seven is entered uh, on Saturday. And I'll just mention a few of the top contenders real quick. Patriot Spirit was a convincing winner of the six furlong inaugural stakes, two starts back at odds on. Uh, they they tried this Constitution cold at two turns of the Sam Davis. It didn't work out. He's adding blinkers, cutting back to his sprint. He's a top contender. Also marks the uh, dirt debut for Valiant Force, a group two winner overseas that ran second. Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf Sprint. Just missed in a five furlong turf sprint as well. So exit's a good showing for Jorge Delgado. You got Sir Flash in there off of a nice uh, allowance win at, at Tampa. Obviously, Ship the Shore is a contender off of an eight length win in the uh, Lime, Limehouse Stakes in early January. And I'll also mention number three, Beeline. This is a, a Colt. Uh, uh, Kentucky bred by B Jersey, who debuted on a February 10th in a maiden special way to Gulfstream, won by three and three quarters lengths. That was a pretty good looking maiden race. Top Pletcher had hot maiden in that race. B line just you know, easily beat him and the rest of them. He got a 95 brisk net speed rating, huge number. So I'm excited to see B line make his stakes debut in the Hutchison Stakes at Gulfstream, Darren. Yeah, uh, that race came out pretty strong. Uh, Beeline is one that I put a circle around after he debuted. It was a nice uh, payout that day if you had him as well. But uh, I think you're definitely going to see some sprint stars coming out of that race as the uh, as the season progresses. Uh, for me, race 10 at Oaklawn on Saturday marks the return of Rocket Can. Uh, Rocket Can is the Bill Mott trainee who was on the Triple Crown Trail last year. Uh, was a little bit of a buzz horse uh, when he won the grade three Holy Bull. Then he ran a, a really good second in the Fountain of Youth to... Uh, what at the time was the Kentucky Derby favorite, Forte, went off favorite in the Arkansas Derby, a race that he did not put forth uh, his best effort, and then made a, a pretty good move in the Kentucky Derby before flattening out late, maybe indicating that the mile and a quarter was just a bit behind beyond his scope. Uh, Bill Mott said that he tried to get this horse back in the latter part of the year last year in the summer, late summer and into the fall, but he got sick on him, had a little bit of a setback there. So they decided to give him a little bit more time, bring him back slowly and get him ready for a four-year-old campaign. So uh, he's always been a horse with some talent. I'll be curious to see what he comes back. It certainly is not a an easy field that he's going to be facing here. Uh, Harlow Cap is coming in off of a win in an allowance event, as is Heroic Move, uh, who was a drop-and-pop winner last time at Oakland uh, for Robertino Diodoro. So he's found himself a, a pretty tough spot for the return. But I'll be curious to see what Rocket Can looks like off the layoff, guys. Gotta love the name. I'm gonna yeah, have that, that John song in my head all day because I always think of it when I see Rocket Can. Anyway, and that, and, and and Frank, you know, Mott trains for uh, uh, Frank Fletcher, and and the Fletcher fam family is based in Arkansas, so they like to run their horses at Oaklawn. So he's shipping in Rocket Can and American Rocket earlier in the card uh, to run into some of these races at Oaklawn on a Saturday, and you know he's going to be trying to win those races as well for the owner. So.
Well, I'm taking it over to Fairgrounds. We've got a maiden special weight in race eight on Saturday, and there are three Triple Crown nominees in this field. One in particular, I've had my eye on Cornishman, a Godolphin homebred. He's in my Twin Spire stable alert, so I can keep an extra close eye when he's racing. He's a late closer, and he finished a length second on debut in a six furlong maiden special weight. Then on Risen Star Day, he was on the undercard in a maiden special weight at one and one sixteenth of a mile was once again a length second. He got bumped at the start, a little bit of a troubled trip. So I think maybe can finally step forward here. And if he does get the win, potentially we'll see him in one of the later, one of the final Kentucky Derby prep races to try to make the field for the Derby. He's by curling out of a Bernardini mare. So he's got that classic pedigree. I think he looks like a great horse, just hasn't gotten the job done yet. He was beaten by Antiquarian for Todd Pletcher, a really good horse on the Risen Star undercard. So I think this is his race. Not a lot of speed entered. So as a closer, I don't know what kind of pace we're going to get here, but hopefully he'll get the win because I think he looks like such a good horse. And, you know, I'd like to see him make the derby field. It might be a little late, but you never know. I think uh, I think Gun Party might have something to say about that for yeah. Steve Asmussen. <laughs> $1.7 million yearling who ran second to just a touch. who is now listed in the Kentucky Derby future wager uh, after running second in the Gotham to the very talented deterministic. The horse stretching out. For the first time, uh, Karina Mia was a was a stud. The dam, um, obviously, just a brilliantly bred horse. That I think the 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 upside is is unlimited with him. So uh, this is you could make an argument. This is probably the best maiden special weight you'll see of the year. Uh, someone's gonna run second or third here. Come out of it and be one to five next time. Uh, it'll probably be either Gun Party or Cornishman. We'll see. <laughs> it is a good race, and 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 so. Sort of like a Cornishman, you know, I loved his debut. I thought he took a little bit of a step back off it last time. It'd be interesting to see because he was so well regarded and he's a big, good looking horse as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a sloppy track. He might get that again because I think there's a high percentage chance of rain, but we'll see. Well, that's all the time we have today for the jury. Check us out, like Darren mentioned, for Power Hour tomorrow at two to three. We'll be live talking all those races. And then, of course, those profit boosts we're offering as well. And then Go to Twin Spires for all the other promos we've got going on this weekend as well. And we'll be back next Thursday with more Best Bets and Fades.